All right, what's up, what's up? It's your boy Steve at Dynasty Life here with my two counterparts today. The Polish, hello. Giddy. You already know it's the Bible line. <laughs> All right, well, today we're bringing you um, an episode of reviewing the NFL draft. We did round one. We're going to go over round two, two and three. Two, two, three, and four we'll do because there's a couple guys in four um, that we can talk about. Um, but yeah, we'll just go straight kind of down the list here. Um, sorry, don't give a shit about the defensive guys. We're just going to stick with the playmakers. Uh, but let's start with, um, Christian Watson going to the Green Bay Packers. Finally, they took a wide receiver. Um, not the one I wanted them to take, but, uh, best guy that was there at the time, big guy, um, small hands did have the highest drop rate of actually all those top receivers that were in uh, this draft class. But um, what do you think of the pick here, um, Hammer, being that you're a Packer fan? <laughs> <laughs> I think the I think this says it all. Packers finally draft a wide receiver, right? So I honestly thought with the 28, they were going to take Watson considering the top, you know, the top six guys came off the board. I would have been more happy not to get too off track, but I would have been more happy if they would have packaged the 22 and the 28 and went up to 16 where New Orleans grabbed their, their guy. Um, So that, that really, it's a little bittersweet, but like I said, they have a guy now who's, a big dude. I talked about this on the previous draft podcast that I like bigger receivers, especially with Aaron. It just feels like I don't know if he's going to be the immediate impact guy that we're expecting him to be, considering that Devonte just looked, walked out the door, right? So now basically we're expecting to draft a wide receiver and say, all right, hey, come in and be Aaron Rodgers' number one target. Go out there, give me 100 grabs for 1,500 yards and 10-plus touchdowns. That's not happening. And I have to temper my expectations a little bit, but I do like the developmental portion of it where he's going to get a full training camp. He's going to be able to work with Aaron. My trepidation is, and I talked with Bagala on the phone about this earlier today and I think even yesterday, the highest amount of catches a rookie wide receiver ever caught from Aaron Rodgers was 37. Okay. So Aaron Rodgers doesn't throw to people he doesn't trust. And for a rookie wide receiver to come in and to go over 75 catches, which means he's probably getting a hundred targets might be a little bit more than he's ready to produce. So I like the pick. It was kind of, at some point, you had to take a guy. Now, they did trade up to this second pick in the second round. So, you know, I, I think they just looked at it and said, hey, this was our guy all along after those top six went. They picked him. I don't think – and also, too, factor in, he doesn't have a primetime guy where he doesn't have to come in and be the guy, right? So when, when Greg Jennings came in, Donald Driver was already there. When Jordy Nelson came in, Greg Jennings was already there. When Devontae Adams came in, Randall Cobb and Jordy Nelson were already there. So those guys had two or three years to be that wide receiver three, wide receiver two, and then work their way up the depth chart and eventually emerge as that, that number one target. I don't think this is that situation. Don't give me Sammy Watkins. I do like Alan Lazard, but don't give me Sammy Watkins. I don't even know if Randall Cobb is still on the team. I think he's still there. He restructured his contract, I believe. Don't give me Amari Rogers, Steve. I know you're going to try and shovel that Amari Rogers garbage at me. I'm not having it. <laughs> so the pick is the pick. They had to take a guy. I think he could be a guy, but is he going to be a guy in two years, in three years? And who knows by then if Aaron Rodgers is even there. So I like the pick, but I'm not, I'm not going to throw a parade. Yeah. Bagala, what do you think about Watson here? I mean, like, like Polish said, it's a good pick, but he's not going to come in and he's not going to come in and, and just give you, you know, outstanding production off the bat. And right now, that's kind of what the Packers need. They need somebody to come in right now and fill the void of what Devontae Adams would, was giving you. Now, one player is not going to do that, you know, especially not a rookie. But when they made the trade, um, 
when they had those two picks and they traded Devontae, I thought they were going to package those two picks and at least try to get up into the top 15, top 10 of this draft and pick somebody like an Alave or, you know, or, or a Dotson and get up there. Like Jahad Dotson would have been perfect for them, but they didn't. And they waited, they took defensive guys and they waited to the, to the second round. Now he may be, he may be a good receiver down the line, but um, he's going to need time to develop. You know what I'm saying? And like Polish said, Aaron Rodgers has to throw the ball to him. And Aaron Rodgers in, in recent years, he just does not throw to rookie receivers. He doesn't trust them. He doesn't trust them to be in the right spot. And Aaron Rodgers just does not like throwing interceptions. So if he doesn't feel that trust with you, he's not going to throw you the ball. So I think we can see from Watson maybe 40, 40 receptions this year. Not a lot of targets. He'll catch maybe 30, 40 balls and you know, you hope for some touchdown potential there because he is 6'4 and he, hit, he does have a bigger frame. But the player, I like. But right now, um, for fantasy-wise, uh, he's a taxi slot guy. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I mean, he, he's got a ton of potential and he landed in a great situation. But, you know, can he produce, you know, right off the bat with Aaron Rodgers and also how much longer is Aaron Rodgers going to be there? So, you know. Uh, but moving on to the next guy, it looks like Brees Hall to the New York Jets, along with Michael Carr Jr. Um, I like to pick for the Jets. Um, I see Brees Hall taking most likely the first and second down work, and I think Carter stays, you know, as the um, as the third down guy and the pass catching guy. I, I don't see them just they they just a team that does not want to have. A, a running back that takes the whole load. Um, and we're seeing that more and more now where teams are just kind of distributing that load, you know, into these two running back sets. So um, I do like Brees Hall. Um, but again, what is the cap? You know, what's his cap? What's the ceiling? At? Well, you're, 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 you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna get um, uh, an early, an early answer on that. Um, he's gonna mm-hmm. get the bulk of the carries. He's, he's bigger than my father. He's, he's you know, good. he's really, he, he's good. You know what I'm saying? He can catch the ball, but, you know, he does need to pass block. And with a rookie quarterback, you know, that's very important. And that, that I think is going to, that's going to cap his, what he does because he may not be in there on those third and long situations, you know, third and sevens that I think that'll be more of Michael Carter's job as we saw. But uh, I think Brees Hall, you know, he he's he he's gonna be the guy there. He's gonna get the bulk of the carries. Um, you know, he's very fast. He can catch the ball. But you know, Robert Sala comes from from San Francisco. They use a running back by committee. That's that's what they do. And I think that's that's just the cloth that he comes from. So. He's going to probably be in a true split his first year. He's going to need to separate himself from Michael Carter to actually become that that three down back. But I do like the player. I do like the pick. The Jets are doing tremendous. They did tremendous things in this draft. It all, it's all going to boil down to Zach Wilson. But I, I, I like Brees Hall, and I, I like where he went. Yeah. Um, Hammer, what do you think about Brees Hall there? Listen, dude, if you could get the number one position ranked running back in the second round, you're doing some good things. So considering who they considering who they picked with their top three picks, the Jets in the first round, they went up to the first round back in. Got additional pieces. And if you can get and, and let's be let's be frank about it. How many true bell cows are there in the NFL? You could probably name five, maybe teams that have a true every down three down, you know, guy. So I think this is a good pick. Michael Carter showed some things. And for me, independent of Brees Hall, who I think I'll just say it straight out, I think was a terrific pick. The development of Zach Wilson is really going to dictate how well Brees Hall, you know, ingratiates himself into the offense. And Bagala brought up something that a lot of people don't bring up when we're talking about, running backs, rookie running backs, pass blocking. 
right? And that's going to determine how much he gets on the field for those opportunities, carries, receptions, et cetera, et cetera. So if he could prove himself in the pass blocking game, I think he'll see, I think he'll see more, more snaps and, and that could lend itself to more opportunities in, in the running game and the passing game. So overall, it's a good pick for the Jets. I don't know what that translates to fantasy wise, because they, the Jets seem to have stockpiled a ton of young, good talent, and they're probably going to spread it around a lot. So I don't think he's going to give you maybe flex consideration on a bye week, but I would taxi him as well. See, see what happens, see what kind of role he's going to have with Michael Carter. And then maybe by week eight, week nine, is usually when we start to see those rookies start to break out and really emerge and get their role kind of set. And then you kind of go from there. So he'd be on the taxi spot for me and I'd keep an eye on his production. And if Michael Carter gets hurt, I'm taking him off the taxi spot. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, I think he's going to be startable from day one. He's going to be the guy getting the carries. Um, now, is he going to give you top 10 production in his first year? No, but he has the potential to give you top 10 production going forward. Um, you know, of course, that first year is going to be um, a little rocky, but we'll see what happens with the Jets and, and, and how they and how they progress. You have to see because uh, um, the Jets need work on that offensive line. And if they right. can't block, if they can't block, then, you know, I just think block either. But that didn't stop Saquon Barkley, did it? Yeah, but that first year he had 91 receptions. No, no, that was those swing routes. The yeah, yeah. So, and, and, course, so. Uh, anyway, moving on to um, the next guy here, Kenneth Walker to the Seahawks in the second round here. Um, great pick for them. I mean, you don't know what's happening with Carson. Penny's great, but he's always hurt. So you need that. Uh, you know, that luxury of trying to of, of having another guy on top of that. Penny's on his one year deal. Carson's last year. So Kenneth Walker has a path to, you know, be the bell cow eventually. Um, I, th I think this year he won't see much. I think Penny will get that work unless he gets hurt. But going forward after that, I, I do like um, Kenneth Walker there in Seattle, um, especially fantasy wise. Uh, what do you think, Bog? I, I, I actually like Ken Walker. Um, I watched a lot of him on, on Saturdays. I, I, he was my favorite running back in this year's draft. He just seems like that typical Seattle running back, tough, hard-nosed running back that's going to bang between the tackles and, and get you those tough yards. You know what I'm saying? So I, I like Ken Walker a lot. The spot that where he went, I, I think he went to one of the – you know, one of the best spots, Seattle. They don't have a quarterback. They're going to run the ball. Carson is, you don't know if he's going to start the season. You don't know if he's going to stay healthy. He had neck surgery. Penny, for me, he's been in the league for four, three, four years now. He's had not even a quarter of a season. The back end of last year is when you said, said all right, oh, Henny, Penny has broke. You know what I'm saying? Broken out, he's good. I don't think he continues that. I, I just don't. I think he, he had a few good games, and Penny is what he is. He's he's injury prone, and you know what I'm saying? Is he going to continue that? You just don't know. I, I Kenneth Walker is a, a, a taxi guy for me, but I can see maybe around, you know, midway through the season, I can see Ken Walker taking over this backfield and – you know, the Seahawks aren't going to be that good. So I don't know what he's, you know, what his numbers project to, but he will, he will get some goal line work. He will get some touchdowns. And I think he's a, a really good stash for years to come. I, I like Ken Walker a lot at Michigan State. Yeah. Hammer, what do you think about uh, Ken Walker? Yeah, I think this is kind of that situation as well where he's got, Penny ahead of him, you know, Carson's still there. So I don't think they'll be in any hurry to just burst mm -hmm. him onto the scene. But the Seahawks do have do have a history of drafting and producing good running backs and running games. So there's no reason to think that he can be in that mold. I will say that I think the Seattle offense as a whole is very interesting because you still have Lockett, you still got Metcalf. You draft a running back. You still got um, – they, they picked up Noah Fant 
from Denver. So it's like they got a fresh rookie running back. So it's like, damn, can we just get a good quarterback in here and get this offense moving? And, you know, also to that offensive line, what's that offensive line going to look like in Seattle? That's really going to determine if, if Kenneth Walker can get some work done and also the two guys ahead of him. So I'm with Bagala on this. I'm kind of a stash and wait, guy, a stash and wait as far as he goes, just because of the guys that are ahead of him. But as I yeah. said, wait till week seven, eight. If you get an injury here, you can probably plug him in. If one of those two top guys are, are out, I would probably stash him on a taxi as well for the first couple of weeks, see what his role looks like, and then go from there. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think realistically, if in rookie draft, um, they're probably they're both probably top five. I still think Brees is still the one on one. Just the potential is just so much. It's so good to be there, and then Kenneth Walker. You could argue to take him before some of the wide receivers off the board, but. Uh, yeah, but that's only because, you know, wide receivers, uh, running back, I mean, I'm sorry, running back is so thin. So, well, exactly. you know, to, to, to be able to get him, he's going to go at the top of a lot of dynasty drafts just because he's a running back. Yeah, and then um, moving on from that, the next guy, don't like this pick at all, Wondell Robinson, New York Giants. Um, I don't know, they got Tony, they got a bunch of wide receivers there. Wandell is a smaller guy. I think they reach for him. I like Mechie better. I like Pickens better. I like Pierce better. I like Sky Moore better. I don't know why they picked Wandell Robinson, but I don't like him whatsoever. What do you guys think about this? I know, I don't like him, period. I wouldn't even draft him, but go ahead. What do you guys think? Well, for me, I, I do think it's a reach, you know, but it – they have a bunch of guys on the outside. What I see for him is that he's going to get the ball in a lot of different ways. It reminds me of the, the Giants, you know, the Giants coach and the GM. They all came from Buffalo. And if you can remember, Buffalo has Isaiah McKinney, where uh, McKenzie, I'm sorry, where they just, they hand him the ball. They throw him the ball. He's going to be a gadget player. And like I think Daryl Patterson, kind like of a Daryl Patterson, you know, he won't run between the tackles, but I see a lot of jet sweeps, a lot of screens for him. They're going to try and get him out in space. And I think he, um, in our league, at least we, we uh, score for kick returns and punt returns. So he can get some work there in fantasy. If, if your league scores for that um, and things like that, but I can say this, if he does, if, he does end up with a third round pick. I would take him this year and this year as a third round pick because he's he's gonna be kick, uh, kicking. They're gonna kick kick return and punt return, and they're gonna find ways to put the ball in his hands because when he does have the ball in his hands, I've saw some some games of uh, he played in Kentucky. He's explosive when he has the ball. He 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 does have that type of game breaking ability. But uh, it was a reach for the Giants. Um, I don't know what he what he's going to translate. He's not worth a high pick. I don't know what his you know his his stats are going to look like. His numbers are going to look like. But if you do score for kick return and punt return, it, it, you know, he, and you got an open taxi slot, you know, and you want to take a flyer, he's not a bad guy to take a flyer on. Yeah. What do you think here, Hammer? Wondell Robinson. I'll give you full disclosure. I don't know much about him, but I do know much about a guy named George Pickens. And if he was available at that <laughs> spot, which he was, I would have taken him. So yeah. that that's one thing I do know. The second thing I know is that wide receiver room with the Giants, it's kind of filled up pretty well, right? You got Kenny Galladay, although he can't really stay healthy, but we'll see what that looks like. You got Kadarius Toney. You got Sterling Shepard still holding on by a thread. Uh, who else you got? Is Slayton still there? I, they're trying to move Slayton now, so they're going to probably trade Slayton. And uh, uh, Shep is coming off the Achilles. So, so, you know. so, so for me, as Bagala said, he knows better than me. This is his team that took this guy, so I'm going to defer to him. He seems like a special teams player to start out with, and if he starts making plays there, 
maybe uh, maybe he has a package that they run him on or something like that. But like I said, I don't know much about him, but I do know if Pickens was there, I would have taken Pickens. Yeah, I mean, just for, for fantasy purposes, two or three gadget plays a game ain't going to be enough to be on my roster. Um, yep. but, you know, that, that's that, that's the main thing. For the most part, guys like these just don't work out. Just that, that gadget stuff is just not enough to mean anything in fantasy. We're looking for fantasy points, you know, how consistently, you know, how good he was or what he did in college. It doesn't matter if it's not translating to, um, you know, the NFL level or fantasy level. So I, there's just not enough. Um, well, that's why I bring up the kick return. Man, because if you, yeah, if you, you know, if you score that. for that and you need somebody on a bye week or something like that, mm-hmm. you can find points with a guy like this. Yeah, and then uh, moving on to the next guy, uh, John Mechie going to the Houston Texans. Um, I wasn't really that high on Mechie, but good spot for him to land in. I mean, you really only got Brandon Cooks there. I mean, Nico Collins, but eh. Um, so decent landing spot for him. Uh, another guy I probably am not going near, um, you know, unless – like Bagala said earlier, you got a third round pick and he's still there. I mean, why not try, you know, take the chance? But uh, what do you guys think about Mechie? You know, with Mechie, he had Jamison Williams on the other side. So he was, mm-hmm. he was, I think he was a beneficiary of so many teams rolling coverage over there. And, you know, he was making plays. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what he's going to do in, in Houston. They don't have a guy like that. So, he, he's Mr. Small, 1000, don't mess Mr. around. Mr. 1000, but he's more of a smaller dude. He is coming off of ACL, so he's not going to be there to begin the season. Um, I don't know. If, if you got a third-round pick, you probably take him. If not, he, he'll be there where you can pick him up off waivers when, you know, when he does actually start to play. But, you know, position rank, he was the ninth receiver out of all of those receivers. He got talent. He just got to see if it can translate. Yeah, I think it's rough with this year's draft. I think after the first like twelve picks, you're kind of just like, eh, who knows what's gonna happen with the rest of those guys. Um, so it's it's rough. But um, moving on to the next one, another guy don't like to pick. I don't know what the Patriots are doing. Tyquan Thornton. But Pickens, Pierce, and Sky Moore are still out there. So I, I don't know what they're thinking here. I don't like um, Thornton at all. He wasn't on my radar at all. The only thing is that he was the fastest wide receiver. He's I mean, fast. That, 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 that's that doesn't much. always translate. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, this is, I don't know, nothing really um, for me. Maybe he ends up in the slot, but. For a team that's going to run the ball a lot, I don't see really anything for this guy to do. He, what, he's, what, just a fa- he's, he's a he's a fast guy. Um, he 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 can take the top off of the defense, but he I don't think he's he's not that polished, and uh, it's going to take some time for him to catch up to the speed of the game. Yeah, yeah. Well, my only uh, thought on this is Bill Belichick cannot draft wide receivers. No, that's my only thought. No, we can't. No. But, um, all right, we're going to wrap up um, this episode here. We're going to do a part two, and we'll go over um, the rest of the second, third, and fourth round. So pick in the sky more, um, Pierce, and some of those guys. Um, so we'll hit you. We'll see you all on the next video. Like, comment, subscribe. Um, but watch part number two. I'm a peacock captain. You got to let me fly on this one.